Hi, everyone. I'm Sebastian. Sebastian. So, thank you for coming. And thank you because I didn't have to come to you this time, so it was that, that I won. Um, so, today, I will talk about um, high density hosting with Orchard on Azure. Blogs on Azure, that's the simple title. And I say today because <clears throat> I have two talks tomorrow and another one on Wednesday. And for that, I hate you. Okay. <laughs> the panels are fine. I don't have anything to do to, for the sessions. But these things, it's crazy. Um, so this is about a project that I've been working on the last few months, which is about having all the web logs at ASP.NET on, um, on Orchard. Who didn't know that web logs at ASP.NET was running on Orchard? And if you don't raise your hand, so you know about it. Everyone knows about it. It's not new. It should be new somehow because we didn't communicate at all, well, a lot about that. So the, 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 the goal was to have um, lots of blogs on the fewer instances or machines that we can have on Azure. And uh, so today I will show you how we did that, the process, and how it works. So, Oh, that's all about it. <laughs> the signal is here. Yeah. Let me continue. So I talk about the infrastructure, how we are hosting it, and what we need to run that. I talk about uh, the content migration, because we had a previous blog engine, and we need to move all the data to Orchard. So the, the experience might, be, might benefit you. We'll also talk about development, what we had to do in order to have that working on top of Orchard. Uh, oh, by, by the way, Bertrand, you say orchard. Okay. Orchard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this guy with a French accent, we can't understand anything. We <laughs> 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 have to work on that. Can uh, you the same coach as me? For public talking? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> he hates the orchard. I have a website and I. Yeah. Okay. So, operations, just to see. What, how we manage those uh, hundreds of blogs. Cost, because you just care about that. How much does it cost to host a blog on, on this platform? Or hundreds of blogs and blogs or whatever. Uh, and uh, then the impact on Orchard. What we gain on the Orchard project based on uh, this work. And finally, how to reuse the, the system so you can reproduce what we've done for these blogs on other uh, blogs or other websites. So a uh, little bit of history about the project. The goal was to migrate uh, weblogs.asp.net. The main known fact about this solution is that it's hosting Scott Guthrie's blog. So if you've been to Scott Guthrie's blog, you must all have been on Scott Guthrie's blog if you're a developer. It was running on the previous weblogs.asp.net, and now it's running on, on the new platform. But it's also running 750 other blogs. Okay. It used to be 800, 900, but we made some uh, cleanup, and now it's 750 some blogs. Um, a few requirements to, for, for this project first. Uh, hundreds of blogs. We need a solution which could handle hundreds of blogs. Just one solution. Not, oh, I want to manage lots of blogs and differently. You know, there has to be one solution, and we can create as many blogs as we want. It has to be hosted on Azure, because someone from Azure asked me to do that, so it has to be on Azure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm in the Azure team. If I don't do it in Azure, that, that's the goal. And that's also a challenge to see if Orchard can do that. And Azure is awesome. You will see it and how it can handle that. Well, Microsoft. ASP.NET, same thing. It has to be on ASP.NET. This is one requirement. So don't try to imagine any other solution which is not on Azure or ASP.NET. It has to be Azure, ASP.NET. Live Writer support. So from a user's perspective, we need to handle Live Writer because when you blog, you need that. The requirement, comments. We need comments. We could have used Discuss, but I will talk about it. We need, we need comments. Theming. Every blog is a separate blog. It's not like a, a single blog where you, have, you will have like 50 authors. It's 
every blog is unique. It's a different website. So we need theming because every blogger will require his own theme. theme. Like, I want blue, I want pink, I want unicorns, I want Azure theming. Why don't you have unicorns on your blog? Back? Unicorns, you like unicorns. <laughs> and open source, it has to be open source. And maybe our last point, free, open source and free. Because we want it to be reusable and we didn't want to have to pay for a provider for it. It was also a challenge for us to have a, uh, a platform that we can build and redistribute uh, to, to host blogs. And uh, actually the goal was to cut some of the cost of the previous platform and also improve it, by the way, at the same time, uh, by providing more features to the users and better manageability for the, for the management. Uh, so let me just show you the result. So it's live, it's been live uh, for two weeks, and uh, I have it running here, let me show you there. So if you go on weblogsasp.net, this is the main portal, where we aggregate all the blog posts from every blogger in the platform. This site, this page, is done with Umbraco. Yeah. So you can say weblogs.asp.net runs on Umbraco. And I won't say it's wrong because it's right. Um, why? Because every blog is hosted on Orchard, but this one was done by the company called uh, Nudesic, who is uh, handling the website. And they had uh, uh, very good knowledge of Umbraco, and they already had a theme for their homepage on Umbraco. So they just reuse what they had to aggregate all the blog posts from every blog. That makes sense because they, this is what they know. So that's fine, okay? It's on Azure, it's .NET. We all agree that it's good. Uh, so this is the main portal and if I go on the blog, this is one of the blogs and one of the posts. So first comment, did you see how fast it is? I, could not even, I, I blinked and then the page was there. <laughs> So, uh, and I took just one by chance. And you can also go to Scott Boo's blog. This is the home page of Scott Boo's blog. And it, there are 10 posts, then there are all the archives, the tags, nice shirt, <laughs> custom theme. <laughs> there are tags, I can click on the Azure tags and see all these uh, posts on Azure. I can go to page. It works. Images, beautiful. Custom theme, there are comments. It's protecting using reCAPTCHA. And uh, that works. So this is the blog. There is another one which is kind of funny. Or nice, you can say nice. Ah, reference <laughs> one. And you see the customization that you can do. He added a banner. He added some ads, um, some links. Twitter, Facebook, social links, follow me, tags, and you can add anything you want. So this is the goal, to let users customize their own blog and, and uh, make money out of it. They can make money out of it, great. And we pay for them to make money. Okay, that's, that's, okay. that's fine. Um, you have an RSS feed, everything you need for a blog. And let me show you now the, the administration. So one of the goals was also to, to to make it easy for them to manage their, their blog. It, so we have Live Writer, and the, the administration part of Orchard for the blogs has to be simple. This is always something that people complain about uh, on Orchard. They say, Orchard is too complicated. I, I don't understand how it works. The administration is full of stuff and whatever. And you're wrong if you say that. <laughs> if you make it complicated, it's on you. Don't make it complicated, okay? If you think Orchard is Complex to understand, buy a brain. If you think it's slow, make it fast. It's a, I told you last time, okay? He, he said, it's, Ultra is slow. No, it's fast. Your code is slow. Ultra's code is fast. No, I, sometimes it's okay, I agree. We, we work on it, okay? But usually it's your code. Is slow. So, <laughs> So just to show you that actually it's not that complex. So here I'm logged as a super user, but I will log as Bertrand, because it's Bertrand's uh, blog. So this is what a blogger sees when he goes on his blog. It's not that complex. I don't, I'm not sure WordPress is simpler than that. You, have, you can create new pages. Okay, we should remove that. 
you can go into your content and there's just one about page. You can see your blog with all the blog posts. You can create a new post, okay, not that hard. You can manage comments, media items, and okay, tags, themes, change the theme, tab settings. That, that, that. If you want to create a, a new blog post, just click on new post. That, that can't be simpler. And this is a user's account. This is what you don't have by default with Orchard. When you install Orchard and you have a new setup, you are the super user. So that might be, that might be the reason why you think it's complex. Because by default, you are the super user and you see everything. But a standard user with a different role than administrator should not see everything, will not see everything. So here is just a standard user and the blog owner, but as a, as a, as a user and doesn't have to handle everything in a website, just need to create the content. And this way, you have uh, much fewer items on the menu, so it's much simpler. And if I go on the same blog as a super user, I will see more things. Um, workflows, users, reports, um, widgets, I think was there before, and uh, more settings too you can change that you can't change if you're not a super admin. So this is the goal, to make it simple, but at, also we, we, as managers of the, of the blog system, we have a super account so that we can change things. And you can't break things. We can, but we won't. Okay. Because you care. Um, so this is uh, just to show you what you can do with the, with the website. And we have lots of famous bloggers. If you're into ORM, we have Franz Buma on the platform. <laughs> Did you blink? Because I changed the page. Okay. <laughs> you see, lots of content. Um, we have all the media on the blob storage. Every Azure service is used, and I will show you that in the next slide. So, and it works, and it's fast. I will also show you that. So, oh, main, main uh, uh, satisfaction is that in the last two weeks, it hasn't been down. So it was like, okay, we release a new platform, everyone will go and Google and Bing. It's up, it works, and 750 blogs are running. So it's, uh, it's uh, I'm pretty, uh, satisfied with the end user solution, and I think users also like it. We have still things to do, but uh, but overall they they like it a lot. So let's go back to my slides. There must be a way for me not to lose where I was. So let's talk about the infrastructure, how it runs, what's uh, behind that. Everything is on Azure, and everything is on an Azure website. Okay. It's not a VM, it's not a cloud service, it's an Azure website. Because it's better. Okay. I will show you why later. We also run on Azure SQL database. It's not a VM with SQL Server on that, it's a SQL Azure database. And why? Because it's better. Simple. And finally, we use the Azure cache. The Azure cache. Uh, why? Because we need that. It's not better. There, are, there is better, but it, it, it's, it's very useful, and we explain why also. Okay. These three components is what we call a node. And to run this website, we have multiple nodes of this thing. This is what we scale horizontally, how we scale the number of blogs we can host. But in the end, those full websites run on a single instance, on a single large instance on Azure. So we have one machine, four cores, seven gigabytes of memory, and it's running 750 independent blogs. And say independent orchard websites, because they are blogs, but they could be anything else. Websites, e-commerce, whatever you want. 750 on one single machine, large instance on Azure. On top of that, this is what we call a node. This is what we scale up, uh, scale horizontally, scale out. And we use blob storage to store all the media items. Um, we also have an ARR instance, which is shared across all the ASP.NET websites. So the main website, the forums, the blogs. So this is already handled by a new basic. And this ARR is doing routing for the request to go on the, the, the dedicated website. We have four websites, Azure websites on the same machine, and each website handles kind of uh, around 200 blogs. And to point to the correct instance, we need a routing mechanism, like a proxy. Um, so ARR is doing that, and I will show you how later. And finally, we are using Content Delivery Network, the CDN of Azure, to, to serve static assets. Oh, and the queue storage. 
So it's all about Azure. We are trying to reuse everything that Azure can provide. It must be very, very expensive, to say. We'll see. So let me show you now how we manage that in the Azure portal. So you know there are two portals. So I will connect to the new one first. I can open the old one. Sorry, the current one too. So you know my, oh no, um, what is that? What's my number? Ah, crap. It's <laughs> <laughs> No, it's 870. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, wait, I have a phone. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what that's. That, the, so, Azure is secure, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I have network, so I should be fine. <laughs> don't clear your cookies before you do a session. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, is it my number? <laughs> it will come, okay. So what I'm waiting, I will go on the next slide. Oh, that's fine, I have it. Yeah, I sign the client key in this one, I'm done. No! <laughs> oh. Seven, <coughs> oh no, this is the SMS number, okay. <laughs> this is the number which sent the SMS, I'm lost. It's very secure, I can't even connect. <laughs> oh, that's good, that's good. It's a trap for hackers. <coughs> and I go there, manage dot windows. I don't want that. I use the old one, works fine. Okay, so you will see here I have five websites. This one is stopped, this was just a trial on, on the same instance. I have one, two, three, four websites. And they run in the same location on the same instance. I will explain you why we have this later. And from there I can monitor what's happening on my systems. I see HTTP errors. Usually they are wrongly <coughs> formatted URLs and they trigger HTTP error. Um, you see the number of requests here, which is this one, CD, like 300 requests per, per minute. We have the CPU, which is CD, so everything is, looks nice. See. Beautiful. And we have the same thing for the four nodes. So it's running well. We have here the databases, four of them, and I will actually explain why. And explain why. So this is a, what I call a node, which is a website, a SQL database, and a cache instance. And then we'll see the CDN. We can see, we can see, we can see the storage where we have the queue. No, the queue is somewhere. Where we? Sorry, it's there. We have the queues and the the blobs but nothing interesting. So this is how we manage that. And also what we have here is in the new portal, there is some, oh, you can't find anything. So what the new portal lets me do is see, for instance, the, the CPU usage of the instance, and also the memory which is available in the system. I want to show it to you. <coughs> Doesn't refresh. So I say it's a network. <laughs> I could, who is responsible for that? 
सुनीता doesn't work okay that's fine later so this is just to show you how we can manage it um, come back here so now let's talk about uh, something which might interest you which is a content migration 750 blogs and they all have content and comments and they don't want to lose their blog post okay you don't say oh we move to a new platform just reset the blog post um, <laughs> and same thing for the comments even if there are spam we don't want to to lose everything. So this is a big deal. Um, so how it works, NewDesic, who owns the previous platform, a new one, exported everything into blogml files. Then you will say, oh, then you use the blogml module uh, from Nick to import it. No, because, <laughs> because it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't finish my sentence for us. Okay. Because we had custom data inside that we need to inject into the blog ML so we could re-import stuff. That's why. And we also needed more uh, things because we have 750 blogs. You don't import 750 blogs like you import one blog. Okay, so that, that, that's why. So anyway, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so the goal is actually to convert a blog ML file to a recipe file. A recipe file being in Orchard what Orchard injects to, to create content and settings and everything. And from a recipe file, we can set up a website. So in this recipe file, we inject the blog posts, the comments, the users, so we can create new users, existing users. Uh, we also create new passwords in this, with this recipe. And, uh, and also we use a, a, a template for the recipe so that if we decide why we are developing the solution to add a new feature by default, we just change the template and we regenerate the recipes for everyone. It's very easy, very fast. We also need to import all the media items with that. And at the same time, we generate a comment files. These comment files will let us copy paste a batch file in the system and oh, pick every recipe file and create the blog on the instances, okay, one by one. And to do that, so these blogs are hosted right now on the East Coast, on the East Coast Data Center. And uh, because it's also using SQL Azure on the East Coast Data Center, if I'm running this command on the West Coast here, the latency between all the requests will be, will be Unusable. So what we do is to process the re those um, recipe files, we create a um, temporary virtual machine on East Coast and we run everything from there. So it's local network to create everything. We just move all the files or the commands there and we run it. And then we stop the machine, so it costs nothing. So let me show you what a migration file looks like. So here in blogml, I have all the blogs, just an update, like the last weeks blogs from people. And I have one guy here, Bleroy, Bertrand's blog. So this is Bertrand's blog. Okay. There is nothing private here. Everything is public, it's his blog posts. So you see the blogs, it's a blog ML file. It's a big XML file with all the content and we can grab anything from that. And then when it's processed by this application, this blog ML converter, which will look at all the blogs, or I can say, oh, please process this specific one, or please ignore these ones because they don't want to be on the platform anymore, or they, does, they don't work, or they moved. And then uh, does lots of things. It does look at authors, uh, comments, it's enabled, copy, pay, co copying the settings, it's um, extracting all the media items, and you might recognize the format here that is creating the blog tag, the comment part, or the route part. So it's building a recipe file. And, uh, and then it's, it's creating some comments based on this file. So we can create a tenant based on this recipe file. And after that, we get a recipe here, like this one, okay? with settings, comments, data, and all the blog posts. So we just take this file and run a command line, um, a, a, um, a command line syntax to, to create a blog based on that. And it will create a blog and all the content inside, and that's done. It will take a night to create the first website, 700 websites, but after that we can update just the content we want. And this is what we did. Um, so during the migration, there was the, the, the tool to migrate the, the blog ML to the recipes has two features. Create a blog with everything or update from all the content from a specific date. For instance, when we rolled out the, the beta version, we created everything and it could play. But at the same time, there are blogs, there are 
production logs were, were still running. So after one week, we just create an, an updated recipe with all the new comments and the updated blog posts, so we can just move the, the delta of data uh, to, the, to the new system. Modules. So how much code did we have to do to make it run um, differently? We are using XML modules. <laughs> NGM.open authentication from Niklas. <coughs> uh, this one lets us handle um, live ID, sorry, Microsoft account authentication. Um, the only thing which, which was needed is a way to apply a single application API ID from uh, Microsoft Connect to a set of blogs, because each, each blog has a different URL. So the Live Connect API will, will only redirect to each blog if we had as many application IDs in the, in the system, and we didn't want that. So there is just a single new feature in this module to, to get a single point of entry from the authentication token back to the website which will itself redirect to the correct blog. So very simple, but the, uh, just an improvement I made to the, to the, um, to the module. Uh, I'm also using the sitemap module from uh, Web Advanced because, because it's better to have a sitemap for SEO. And this module is very well done, so I'm, I'm using that. And uh, that's it about a Gary module. We made a custom module just to be able to list existing tenants. So we have four websites. Each website has 200 tenants. And on the portal, we need to be able to list everything which is there. Okay? We need to discover all the blogs. So for that, every tenant, sorry, every um, node has a, has a module on the main tenant, which can list all the existing um, blogs, actually. But tenants, you know. And we also have a, <coughs> a blog post notification module, so that when a blog post is created, the portal has a notification using Azure queues and can update the, the main page by downloading the the new post. And that's about it. And uh, on top of that, we have a new theme which is configurable and based on uh, Bootstrap. Where's Philip? Hi, Philip. Respect. <laughs> like you, Philip. Nick, I like you too. Uh, bootstrap machine. We'll talk about it tomorrow. It's a new theme. And demo. Quick one, just to show you the custom feature we have. So when you go on a, blo on a, on a node, so a node looks like something, looks like this, without that and that. So this is the actual Azure websites, okay? AzureWebsites.net, weblogs, ASP.NET, one, two, three, and four, four nodes on the same instance. But Remember, the proxy is converting the weblogs API slash scodgu to not for slash scodgu internally. Okay? So this is the internal address in, in Azure. And um, if I go on the maintenance, this one, I can list all the blogs, which are all the tenants which are on this website. And let's see custom feed builder slash tenants. And here I have an XML file with the name of the blog, description, the container ID, which is necessary for the RSS feed. And this way we can, we can manage all the tenants which are there from a different website. So it's kind of an API for this, this system. And this is pretty easy to do. Oh, this is international content. Um, and this way we can make, we can make the, the portal run. So just three simple modules to use, two on the gallery and one to manage all the tenants at once. Uh, in terms of performance, uh, there are bottlenecks. The bottlenecks are memory, database queries, and CPU. Okay? So like any application, we need to measure that and to see how we can improve and what's the bottleneck in terms of performance, raw performance, like request per second, or um, latency, or how many blocks can we have on a single machine? Can we have just two orchard websites? Can we have 1,000, 1 million? That's the question. So to test that, we did some load tests and some end-to-end -end tests. Load tests to first see if tomorrow Scott goes really create a new blog post, tweets about it, the world, the .net world, the .net world comes back on the website, and does it put the, 
all the instances down because Scott Gooseberry's blog is like any other blog on a system. If it crashes the instance, it crashes everything also. So we need to ensure that it can handle the, the load. <coughs> and end to end to see if one page, one blog can um, have good uh, performance from the server to the client. Okay. <coughs> and to handle performance, you don't manage performance with one site, the same as with 750 sites. This is not the same issue. So while we made this solution, we discovered lots of issues in Notion. You already knew about lots of issues. We found even more issues. And they are fixed, and you get it for free. Microsoft is paying for that for you. Um, so talking about memory, what is the memory consumption of this system, and specifically of Orchard? If you run a web website the first time from Orchard with the default module, you will get 150 megabytes of memory taken. Okay? If you multiply that by 750, it doesn't fit into one server. But we have multi-tenancy in Orchard. So we can reuse part of the memory, the same app, app, app pool and everything which is already loaded. So in Orchard, every new tenant takes 10 megabytes with the default set of modules. So how many tenants in large instance with 7 gigabytes? Do your math work? Brain. Josh? Josh, Google? Josh? John. John, can you Google that? Seven gigabyte divided by ten by around seven hundred something like that. Okay. So seven gigabytes, seven tenants, seven hundred tenants in thirty-two bit. Okay, in thirty-two bit. What's the memory limit of a website? It's in thirty-two bit. It's two gigabytes. So seven hundred tenants don't fit into a single in single W three P process in thirty-two bits because uh, one process of IS is limited to two gigabytes raw data, OK? So what we have to do is just put 200 tenants on a single IS process. Whatever the machine you have, there's a limit in 32 bits. Then you could say go in 64 bits. But if we go in 64 bits, it doesn't take 150 megabytes anymore, or 10 megabytes per tenant. It takes twice of that. So then it takes more. So I want to take the less. So 200 tenants per IS process, kind of the the limitation with this system. So that this is why we have four different websites on the same instance, because we are creating four different app pools with a limit of two gigabytes, and they're in the same machine. So we use the, all the available amount of, of memory this way. And we just need to route the different requests to the correct instance. And also to gain some memory, we don't cache in process. We cache, we put the data of the cache, of the output cache, in, um, in Azure cache. This way, we don't have to pay for RAM just to save the output cache. We pay a, an external service, which is cheaper than buying RAM on, on these instances. So memory is quite of a, a, a bottleneck on, on the system. And uh, also, the goal is to reduce the number of modules, because the more modules you have, the more memory is taken. So if you don't use a module, delete it, if you care about memory. And in this case, we care about memory. Now about the database performance. Um, so memory was, a, was a, a constraint, but when you have one website, usually the database is the main issue, okay? and you will care about it. In our case, memory was the main issue, but database ca uh, comes second. So the, the performance of database, let me talk about background tasks. In Orchard, there are background tasks. So every minute, or every five minutes, depends on how you configure it. But by default, every minute, there are some modules which will hit the database to see if something is happening. For instance, the alias updater. This guy is responsible to see if someone else, some other node instance, uh, created a new content item with a custom uh, slug, a custom route. Because the alias updater is here to inform the routing engine that um, a specific URL goes to a specific content item. And uh, if you didn't create the content item on the same machine as the list of uh, elements, then you won't be able to reach the, the new content item. So the updater is here to synchronize all the nodes of a farm to, to keep the routes up to date. And it implies queries to the database. Scheduled tasks, like publish later, archive, archive later, or anything you can have in the workflow, um, the workflow is different, will also create scheduled tasks every minute to look into the database. 
then we have the workflow timer. So if you have the workflow module enabled, you will have timers which will um, issue queries every minute. The search engine will also issue queries or do something on the background every minute. So in the end, if you have these four modules enabled, you will have four queries per minute to the database. But we have 750 websites. So this makes 300 qu sorry, 3,000 queries per minute by these four modules. And it makes 50 queries per second. So most of the time, you do nothing. There is no scheduled task to process. There is no new uh, alias to process. There is no new buffer timer, new item to, come to index in a search engine. And you get 50 queries per second on your database for nothing. Uh, and 50 queries per second on the database, it's uh, not nothing. So to optimize that, you need to disable useless background tasks. And this is what we've done recently by externalizing the background tasks and different features. So now if you enable the workflow module, you won't have the workflow timer feature enabled by default. You have to opt in for that. Same thing for the alias updater. It's not there. If you need that, because if you have multiple servers for, the, for your website or multiple IS processes, then you will enable that. But that's not the case in, in, in uh, the majority of the, the, um, the installation, so we, we don't have that enabled. So this is the goal. And with that, you reduce the number of uh, useless queries. Uh, then there is the notion of database granularity. How many databases do we need for 750 blocks? If we use one database, all the requests will go in the same database. We use table prefix, okay, because, because we can use then multiple websites in the same database. But why do we want a single database? Um, we could use one database per tenant, per blog. It would be very easy to manage. Question is the cost. On SQL Azure, one database is one is $10. Okay. So if I have 750 databases, it's expensive. If I use one database and table prefix, I just pay for once. Every database has one connection pool. Every connection is th three megabytes of memory. So the more databases you have, the more memory is taken just for connections. So what we decided is just one database per node with several prefix. Why one per node? Just because it's easier to manage. It's the same concept everywhere. Four times database, four times a website, four times Azure website. And uh, if one goes down, we have the, the other web blocks which still uh, continue to, to run. And uh, not more because it's expensive. So here we have four SQL database, uh, four SQL Azure database, and it's kind of cheap. Um, and we have a single pool per node, so less memory taken than using um, multiple databases. So now the CPU. CPU is not an issue. For this block, 750 blocks, CPU, we don't care. It's not even there. Memory and database is an issue, not CPU. So this is, so just to say that everything is handled by the output cache module or the proxying, so the CPU is kind of not used. Here is a graph of seven days of usage. Um, the blue line is the number of requests, and the user blue line, uh, if you have vision issues, sorry, this is very bad, but uh, uh, what you need to see here is that the average usage of CPU is 20%, which is more than five. And you see some spikes here. This is because the app restarted. It's like an application start. It can go to 80%, and that can, then goes on. Application starts might happen when there is an Azure Websites uh, update. It happens, sometimes weekly, bi-weekly. So load test. How do we do load test? Well, you open Chrome. Don't blink. You hit F5, and you see if it's fast. That works. <laughs> Well, what works is that if you think it's slow, it's really slow. So that at least you, okay, that, that's fast. So we can, go, we can go on the next point, which is using network tab and seeing if the page answers correctly. 195 milliseconds, which is fine because it's on East Coast. So there is 90 milliseconds of just network. Uh, when you click the button, there is 90 milliseconds, but then it starts the, the timer, I think, and then there is 90 milliseconds back and the content. So that's very fast. And then there is load test using this thing. Um, so you can use different tools. Apache ben Benchmark is, a, is one of them. 
So A, B, number of requests, 50 requests, number of concurrent users, two concurrent users, the website. I knew that, it's fine. Scott Goo, let's take the website down. Oh, it won't take it down. Two users, 50 requests, that's fine. And with that, so AB is very powerful. You can do uh, increasing number of users and uh, requests and get graphs in the end. So here we see that 99% of the requests are under the second. Most of them are 500 max, 700 max. So 99% means there is one request out of 50 which took one second. There is always one request, which bothers me. I don't know which one, but fine. Works fine. And you can increase the server. So this is how you will test your load. I'm also on Wi-Fi, West Coast, and not the same server. But you need to ensure that that is works fine. And try that on other blogging platforms. I won't do that, because that's not the point. But you can do it personally <laughs> and uh, by yourself and, and see that it's much faster than others. I won't cite any platform. You can imagine which blog platform you can use. And it's on Azure. It's ultra. Don't say it's, it's slow, because it's fast. I'm bringing it to you. Um, operations. So now, how do we handle operations? Deployment. We use web deploy the first time, just to move on the four different uh, nodes, the full package of Ultra, the pre compiled package. We also use FTP when we just need to move a file specifically somewhere. We use SCM. Who knows SCM? Nobody. I discovered it. Crazy. This is the most awesome tool of Azure on websites. Let me show you. If you are using websites, you must use that. You see my internal address here? <coughs> just before Azure websites, I just type SCM. Dot something. And magic happened. I can see my process, IS process. I can see the memory consumption of the process. It's taking one gigabyte, 1.5 gigabytes of memory, this instance. Okay. I can see the CPU time. I can see my debug console. I can browse files, which are on my Azure website. I can see my log file. I can do. <laughs> Comments. I can do everything on my Azure website just by typing SCM. There are many things. And you can even add new extensions. So if you want to create extensions to your website, you can take them from the gallery and, for instance, add a PHP I mean, or a log viewer. Where is the log viewer? Where is the log viewer? You removed it? Maybe. I don't know. Um, you have PowerShell tools. Log stream, so you can see the stream of your log if there are live uh, logs. And I'm using it for the CMD, and I can go on my health monitoring logs here, see what happened when it's restarted. I can edit the files in place. I don't have to FTP anything down back and forth. I just edit in place and save it. Or I can download the file. So it's really, really useful if you use Azure website. So we are using it a lot. Um, Git, why not? We're not using Git, but you could have a Git repository and push on the four nodes, or as many nodes as you want, at the same time. We also execute scripts using orchard.exe for creating websites or doing some simple management. So for that, I, I generate the command for every, all of the tenants, and I just run the batch on the, on the VM. We use SQL queries generation using SQL Manager. So the, the nice thing is that when you have, in one, data, in one database, 200 tenants, you have 200 tenants times 50 tables. And if you want to change a uh, uh, setting to all the websites, what we do is we do something like this. Let me show you. This select a string plus a name from C the tables where the table looks like this. So this way, we can delete all the tables, for instance. So it will create a SQL statement for each of the tables that I'm filtering here. So if I want to, to, create a, to change the settings, I will filter based on the settings name, like where percent, I don't know, settings, blah, 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 and create an update script here. Okay, Just a simple thing, but very useful when we need to manage this kind of thing. Uh, monitoring, 
Uh, Earth monitoring is required. We also use the auto logging for that. And we go on the portal to see what's happening in terms of memory requests and everything. SCM tools, obviously. Uh, cost, because it's important. How much do we pay for that? One large Azure website. OK, 750 bucks. One large Azure website, basic instance. $223. Okay. For <laughs> <laughs> Give me a mic. For SQL Azure database, $10 each, $40 for database. Okay. For Azure Cache Services, $12 each, 12.5 I think. So $50. Blob storage, $2. We have 2 gigabytes of media items and uh, one queue with one message. Blob storage is free. Uh, and network, we don't know yet, but you pay for the network use. So it depends on the, on the, on the customers. We, we don't have any numbers. Um, overall cost is $340, something like that, okay? If you had the, I don't know, keyboard cost. And for $750. Bucks. And that's cheap. $350. This is what is running right now. Go on Scott Guzzi's blog, look at the performance. This is what is running. I, 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 showed, I, I showed you the exact portal, so there is nothing more to that. To be even faster, we could add a, another. So the current proxy is not even doing cache. It's just routing the request. There is no cache. We could be faster if we use the um, reverse proxy to cache the data, like ARR, Nginx, or whatever. And we don't. So, because it's already too fast. We are, we are thinking about <laughs> adding some sleep in Orchard just to let them think it's really Orchard, because they said, no, it's not Orchard. It's too fast. Oh, someone told me that when I showed the, the <laughs> I went, I, I swear, I went to an Azure guy because I had some questions about ARR and how to customize it. Um, Ruslan, if you know Ruslan, the ARR guru in Asia. And, uh, and I was asking some questions about optimizing and using this base cache. And I showed him the blog and he said, oh, it's fast. Yeah, it's fast. I thought the author was slow. And uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. And there is, this is one blog and there are 750 other blogs in the same machine. So imagine, uh, wow. So it's fast, it's cheap, it's simple, it's beautiful. Use Orchard. So the impact on the Orchard project. Performance improvements. Uh, I feel your pain <laughs> because I made a website in Orchard. <laughs> <laughs> and this is good for you, OK? So yeah, for instance, MVC routes. There was a huge performance uh, issue with MVC routes in ASP.NET because it's not supposed to handle that many thousands of routes. Uh, every, every module will create two routes, HPNet routes. Uh, we have 50 modules, so let, okay, let's say 50 routes. We have 1,000 tenants, 50,000 routes in the collection. And the issue is HPNet, it's like it's copy-pasting every time it looks for a route. So it was unusable. So we changed how Orchard was dealing with routes so that it can handle 50,000 routes or as many as you want. Uh, but now it's better. <clears throat> bug fixes, lots of bug fixes. Session disposal. Sessions were not disposed. So when you run 750 tenants, you see that quite fast. Okay? When you have one site, you might not see that. But with 750 tenants, we, we found it very easy. Um, multi tenancy improvement, so that you can uh, start and stop a tenant without stopping everything. In, uh, set, up and, um, um, set up feature without also restarting every tenant. New modules that we stole from Bertrand. Uh, Tag Cloud, we stole the feed burner. Well, we stole. He was happy that we had it in core, so he didn't have to handle it anymore. Uh, archive, there is a new archives page, by the way. If you type blog slash archive, we see a page. There is a widget, but now there is a page. Comments notification and uh, closed comments. So, like after 60 days, you can close the comments automatically. I'm not really proud of these two uh, um, last features, but uh, this is better for Ocho. And there are lots of improvements in the output cache. And a new thing that I will show you tomorrow. Uh, reusability. So uh, we need to make this platform reusable by you or by anyone who wants to host lots of blogs. So in order to do that, we'll have to do some documentation. We accept help. Uh, if you want something. Uh, content migration. So we'll make the content migration reusable. And everything should go into the Orchard CMS uh, uh, um, account on GitHub, maybe, or on Coldplay, we'll see. Uh, and the same thing for the custom module. Uh, the theme also will be public, but I will talk about it tomorrow. And uh, to end this session, yes, 
Hotshot can be fast and easy to use. If you make it fast and easy to use. Yeah. Don't make it slow and complex. Uh, Multi-tenancy is the key to host um, lots of websites. Use multi-tenancy. Azure is really adapted for this kind of scenario. If you want to host lots of websites, Azure multi-tenancy is, is really, really good and cheap. And uh, if you want to know more about how to host lots of websites on a single server, you have to attend Lombic session on Wednesday. Maybe they have better ideas and better content than me. We'll see. I'm sure. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? So each of the 750. So each of those 750 sites is a tenant. You can I wasn't totally clear. Um, I'll probably have others, but. Uh, did each uh, blog owner have to do their own theme as part of the migration? So the goal was to provide um, a default theme based on Bootstrap, very simple, very clean, and that they can customize. So they can add custom CSS, custom scripts, custom things. Um, but they can't choose an other theme. So we decided to start with just one theme, which is customizable. We can add as many themes as we want. It depends on, on the performance impact, but we can. And they can customize it by creating by creating custom CSS. I had a question. Um, you said you had a single database with table prefix. Is it a table prefix for each site, like each blob? Each blob has a table prefix, the name of the blob. Okay. Actually, I wanted to show you. It was ready. I forgot about it. Where is that? Here. So here I have the four databases for each node and tables. And you see here. <coughs> One blog, table prefix, and all the, the tables, and so on. Everything is here. And some of the blogs are really huge in terms of content. Like Scott Guthrie has hundreds of blog posts and has 30, more than 30,000 comments. And each comment is a content item. And you see it's fast. Um, did you really just have a single instance? Because I was under the impression that you had to have more than one to guarantee uptime. So, single instance of what? Um, of the website role? We have four. So we have a single large instance. I will show you. How do you know that? It's because when you go on websites, you see the location East US, which means it's the same instance. I don't know how to make two instances of two different websites in the same region. Right now, I don't think it's possible. You need another subscription. So. East US, East US, East US, East US, websites. So on the same machine. So in single instance. So you just pay for one instance, even if you have four websites. You can have up to 500 websites, Asia websites, on a single instance on Asia. Here I'm using four. This is hard. This is way better. <laughs> OK, the, um, that migrator command line tool you wrote, is that publicly available? So it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's not a, yeah, it's a command line, but I ran it from Visual Studio. The, the goal is to make it pub, um, public so we can reproduce how to migrate from the old platform to the new one. Okay. Yeah. Because there but, are other but since I'm at this conference, can I get it now? Yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, and are you going to talk a little it's, bit it's more auto, about... It's auto curve code. Yeah. So you can, it's open source. Can you say a little bit more about that routing manager, ARR? Yeah, so the goal is just... In, in uh, IS, you can create URL rewrites rules right. with the rules tag and then rewrite, whatever. And the, the thing is just, OK, um, take the URL, which can be weblogs.asp.net slash scottgu, go to the first slash, and you see scottgu. From A to E, the first letter, go to this website. So it's routing, it's rerouting, transferring the, the, the request to a specific website based on the first letter of the, the prefix. <coughs> So is that an AR? You said it's, you're saying it's using ARR. Yeah. So you're saying that's an IIS thing? Yeah. It is an IIS. It's IIS. It's okay. also in every IIS instance. So ARR right. is IIS, but your Orchard website runs in IIS, right. so it could also do that. Right. But we need an entry point for the domain to come in and to reroute to different IIS servers. You can use ARR on any other proxy server. Okay. It's just routing. That's if you just have an Azure website, um, can you configure the? IS instance in the website? 
Uh, I see you can using the so you can use it with a web config. It's the web config file you can define the routes. Okay. So you could create a website which is just a web config file which will do the routing. But there is a trick which is on websites there is a RR. You just need to enable it. So if you look at Russland's blog, the guy who helped me on that, yes. uh, is explaining how to create routing using ARR in a website. So you don't need a VM. You can enable that right. on yeah. a website. It's you very cheap. It. Yeah. You, you can't can, do it in the yes. website. Great. You can't even use a free instance or a shared instance to do that. Okay. Or because you have one web instance, you could have one of the websites. It takes like 100 megabytes of memory, to run, or less, less than that, to run an ARR. Right. And this is actually what this guy is. This guy is a website which we try to use as an ARR proxy. Okay. Inside the same instance. So we don't even need another VM for the ARR. But because we already have that for other websites, we use the VM. That's it. I just wanted to comment that uh, the SCM tool is actually Project Kudu, which is an outer curve website or outer curve project. And you can actually modify that if it doesn't do what you want and uh, upload it to an Azure website. So um, feel free to participate in that as well. Yeah, Kudu. Kudu is yep. a code name for the, um, the Git publishing tools. Mm -hmm. Big publish is actually code name could it? You can make it. A French guy did that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had another question. Uh, one of the things you talked about was disabling the, or not having so many background tasks running. So you had 750 sites. Uh, how many background tasks are running? Or did you say you converted that all over to the Azure key? Background tasks are running? Yeah. It depends on each website. Right, oh, for our site? Yeah. Didn't you say you changed how some of the background tasks work to do some kind of like? Yeah, we, we, we externalize them into features so that we don't need them. So for instance, the workflow timer is not enabled on the website. The search, well, the search is not enabled, we might need that. The alias updater is not enabled. Um, the schedule tasks are enabled. This is the only background task. We have scheduled task, background task. Because we need bloggers to be able to blog later. So we need a schedule task. And what we did also, we reduced the, the period um, the time between two background tasks. So we set it up to five minutes. It's just a setting in a config file in Orchard while it's commented already right now. So you can increase the time between two requests. Okay. So we pushed that to five minutes, which, which uh, makes the number of requests divided by five. Does it run like all 750 at once or is it schedule on like? It no, it's schedule. every minute, every minute it asks the, the database, do you have something to run in the last minute? So if you say publish later uh, tomorrow morning, there's a, uh, there's a record in database. And every minute, it looks at the time and says, do you have something to run in the previous minute? And it says, no, no, no. And tomorrow morning, it said, yes, there's a task which was in the last minute. Or there's a task which is before now. So extract it and process it. I didn't know like, for every five minutes, like, it go through all like 200 or so sites on each instance, and then it, it does be done. OK. But you don't, it's not all, this, all at the same time. They, have, they start different at different times when they start. So. Okay. We have one last question. Uh, is it possible to have a setting that will be shared across all of the blocks instead of having you know, settings for each? Uh, okay. So it depends on the modules and on each setting. Um, for instance, we did that for uh, SMTP settings because we wanted every block to use the same SMTP settings. A common one. So there is a web config setting that uh, is used. So now the, the SMTP modules will look at the tenant setting. If there is something, it will use that. Otherwise, it will look at the web config setting to use the SMTP configuration from the web config. This is something that we can do. There are, there are improvements we should do on this matter because when you talk about multi tenancy, you care about not having to set up everything everywhere. But right now, the, lots of them are everywhere because they are all different. Like how long uh, do the comments take before being closed, things like that, they are custom. But there are, yeah, there are specific settings where it makes sense to have them shared by every tenant. So, so right now do we have a module for, to do that? Or no, it's not about a module. It, every module has to define where it's looking for the settings. Maybe an improvement would be to have a common API to handle that. Okay. I'm sure Lombik has something like this somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have done some things for the settings, actually, so it will explain you. And um, what do you have to say? 
But that's also why we have this batch SQL queries. If I want to update a setting everywhere, I'm writing the SQL query and I'm sending it to everyone. Yeah, but that's not really efficient. Though. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not maybe it, it's not nice like yeah. Orchard, but uh, that does the job. Uh, sometimes uh, faster than thinking about. There is a, the Orchard way, and this is what I have also is to generate a recipe with a setting update, because we have it in recipes. You can update settings and execute orchard command. But then it creates 700 orchard.exe calls. It might take uh, five hours, because it has to load the tenant locally to execute the command, dispose, load the next tenant, and so on. It's like starting a tenant locally on the VM. So this is the best way, but it will take hours to do. So when I want it to be fast, one sec, I'm doing a SQL query. But you need to understand database. There is no documentation. Do the orchard.exe thing. Mm -hmm. I know the database, but well, you know this. Well, you look at the database. Call me. All right, we've got one last question. Hopefully, <laughs> quick. Uh, first, is all this code checked in? No, no. no. So like first, one question. <laughs> <laughs> is all the code checked in to the late, to the uh, main branch? If we were to get it, we have all. Oh, the so this submit. thing is checked on the uh, uh, on the local branch. The the, the project. So two things. The custom module is on the local branch. It's not public yet. But all the improvements, performance improvements, new features, new modules, uh, separate features, everything, is on the main branch. Okay, so the source and listeners from today would have all that stuff. The improvements, not the custom module. Yeah, right. Not the migration module, not the tenant listing module, and everything. But the two days, I'm using one that takes branch. I'm using, let me show you. You see, I'm based here. This is Project MSC, Microsoft Communities. And uh, it's based on 1.x, actually. So I rebase it on 1.x. So if you use 1.x, you will have all the blogs in Chrome. You can run that on 1.x today. With the same performance, the same stuff. Everything. For, or something else than blogs. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>